What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Aegis Esports' coverage of the NACL Open Qualifiers, where we have got ourselves our first round of the, I guess you could call it the playoff stage, the group stage, the GSL group Technically, stage, yeah. probably what the right name would be. We've got Komodo taking on Contingent Esports in a fearless best of three to try to inch their way closer towards that true playoffs bracket. My name's Gordo. I'm joined by TDS today. TDS, how are you doing, man? Excited. Yesterday was a great night of games with Lotus and GHG, and I'm hoping for the same thing here with Komodo and Contingent. Two teams that, well, Komodo was hyped just for this by the roster, virtue of the roster. They have a great roster anyway. And then Contingent coming through in not an unexpected manner, but I would say in an interesting way. I think they are one of the rosters that may surprise if they are given the chance. So this match tonight can be quite interesting to see, and I hope that we get great games. Yeah, I absolutely do as well. So let's start things off before we get into the draft by introducing our two teams here tonight. Kicking things off with Komodo. So this is the original roster we were told about was going to be Eclipse, Trickster, Doxa, Lynx, Pika Pika, and the roster that they played with in the Open Qualifiers. We did hear just before we got started here tonight, Lynx will be out tonight. Fnatic will be in off-rolling at AD Carry. Well, they just said he was going to be in. We don't know if it's actually Fnatic oh. in the AD carry, right? Like, it's not yet That's confirmed. So, could be anyone. Well, I'm just going to wait and see who's going to go there. But losing Lynx, in my eyes, is one of the biggest, like, mazes that Komodo may have here. Because he's one of the strongest AD carries we have in the OQs. He performed great in the previous ones. And this time around, he's going to try and do uh, a pretty good or a similar job at trying to deliver here. Yeah, and then, you know, you start looking at Fnatic and Doxa coming on in both as starters. They were both part of that Nightblood gaming roster that yeah. was not really quite able to live up to expectations here. So we'll have to wait and see just how they'll be able to do with the new members in and around Komodo. Meanwhile, Contingent running it back from OQ1 are coming back with the exact same roster. They've got Sandflame, Wen Win, Titan, War Cyclone, and Miracle from top to bottom. And this squad definitely putting their mark on the Contingent legacy here, having gotten them to their first playoff stage last split and i keep saying playoffs i mean gso group, group stage, stage. Yeah. getting them to their first group stage last time around getting them through that swiss qualifier now getting the chance to do the same a second time here uh as they've made it once again now facing off against komodo yeah doing a pretty good job at trying to keep contingent in a relevant spot and they are a roster that is really interesting obviously i would kind of go towards the bot side as well where cyclone and miracle the two players that kind of bring up a lot of my attention coming into this roster but titan and when win were also surprised in a positive manner in the previous stage and i think they're going to be interesting to keep our eyes on too obviously the three two score then means they kind of barely did it but in the same vein it's no shame with that you can just be a dark horse and that way deliver later on certainly here and with these two squads coming on out here, it looks like, oh boy, we're going to be in uh, the old draft law this time. Oh, we've even got like a little setup for it now, though. So our, our heads are still on here. Yeah. I feel like I'm way too low here. I'm going to I'm going to do a little real time adjusting here there. Maybe now I'll be a little bit more centered. This is awesome, though. I'm glad that we get if we're going to be using uh, it, yeah. it's not draft law. What is it? It's um, pro draft. Pro draft, thank you. It's been a long time since we've been regularly using this one. But yeah, if we're going to be using pro draft, I mean, really good stuff that we're uh, able to at least get a little bit back to normalcy, keep everything a little more organized. We've even got spaces yep. for the fearless picks and bands here, I hope. So this is going to be good stuff. As we're getting into the draft number one, Rel and Ash going to be the first ones taken off the board. No huge surprises there. Yeah, Ash has been a staple red side band, it feels like, since the OQ started. And now that we do enter into the newer patch, the life patch, it does mean that there's going to be some champions that are going to be enabled finally in, in the case of Aurora. And I'm not sure if you were able to catch anything yesterday, Gordo, but we had first-hand experience with Aurora. She absolutely destroyed the enemy, so I'm not expecting to see an Aurora either banned or 100% pick, because that champion actually was quite scary and the ultimate was great. But so far, a lot of attention towards the kind of stronger AD carry peaks in the form of the Ash, the Estro, the Lucian as well in the mid lane, and then nearly a new year banned away for the junglers. The main surprise I would say is the Rail, because it's not a typical band you see in almost any rotation, but maybe it's more pinpointing towards Komodo's potential to just force an engagement, as with the brand coming through, strong champion pick. 
Yeah, so it looks like that Aurora is still going to be sitting up here. I have not uh, gotten to see too much competitive Aurora yet, TDS, so we, we may be winging it here if that is what ends up coming on through. But the brand going to be what starts things off for Contingent. That's probably going to the jungle for Wen Win, uh, and he's found some really good success with that one so far in his journey through these summer OQs. Going to be a response attempt for Komodo. Yeah. Getting that uh, Leona really early here for Pika Pika. Uh, who is going to be playing with a unfamiliar bot lane partner in Fnatic, but a very experienced one, a player who has really made a big mark in the tier three ecosystem themselves. Yep. It'll be very cool to see what he's going to be doing coming in here in the AD carry role, kind of filling in uh, for City Witty's shoes, a uh, player who also did the jungle to AD carry role swap quite a few times. True, he d did play around quite a bit with that, and we end up the first two picks from Komodo with Leona and Tristana. Leona kind of justifies the rel ban then, because if you went f immediately for an uh, engaged support pick to start it off, means that they probably were expecting the rel to potentially have that place, if not the Leona. And then the Tristana feels like it's going to be then the quirky against Tristana mid lane matchup, because it's not that typical that we see the Tristana in the bot lane anymore. Not impossible, but probably not going to be the case. And then we close it out with the Brom, which I'm not against it, like 40 engage of the Leona plus the damage of the Tristana. I think the Braum can have quite a bit of value here and it's more depending on now what you want to go for in terms of the matchup or the potential jungle matchup that you want to go with this time around. With the brand already picked, I think Syra feels like the most logical option, especially if you have an 80 mid laner. But there is obviously other options like the Lily as well. Absolutely here, there's going to be that Lilia getting locked on in. That's going to be going over into the jungle for Komodo. See how Wilson will be able to pilot on that one. He's Wilson again, right? We're not we're not back into we had Trickster on the graphic, but we'll, we'll go with we'll go with Wilson for now uh, as now he's coming on in with that Lilia really powerful AP jungler in its own right. Doxa on the quirky mid definitely something that's got to be a little bit scary if you're Komodo. Uh, he's definitely uh, or sorry, if you're contingent coming out. Oh, so I'm mixing up my players. It's yeah. going to be Doxa on Tristana for Komodo. If you're contingent, yeah. you should be a little bit worried about that one, though. He's definitely got a lot of firepower in the mid lane. Kind of feels like we didn't get him in the mid lane pool too much last time because Nightblood didn't work out. Glad to see yeah. him on this Komodo roster finding so far some pretty solid success. It has only been Swiss stage so far. We'll see if he can kind of turn around his split and his season with this uh, Komodo team. Yeah, I don't think he wants to remember that Nightblood time because of what happened there, but probably this time around with Komodo feels like he has a much more solid roster, to put it like that, that he can try and play with, and it feels like they are dependent on them, or not dependent, confident in him to deliver in the mid lane, especially going for a Tristana matchup, not going to be an easy task, as we see the remaining bands coming through. The Twisted Fate is the one that kind of surprises me the most, because with Corgi already picked, you kind of are expecting that to go into the mid lane, so a top lane Twisted Fate and a cannon probably weren't going to be that big of choices now. Ending to ban away all the bot lane pool, Misfortune, and Jin, the two other kind of big AD carries currently. Maybe the other one would be the Jinx and the Seri to try and like put attention into those champions, but it feels like these two were kind of the stronger ones in people's minds. So now for Komodo that are playing without links, what will be their option? I think Jinx is not a bad champion. The Varus has been rising as well, or coming back a little bit as well in terms of the attack speed version of, of his build. And it's not a bad option to go for, especially because you also can flex this champion if you want to send it into another position. Definitely here, the Varus going to get locked on in. That's going to be Fnatic's pick in the bot lane. Contingent going to respond by going aggressive here. They take the Callista into the bot lane for War Cyclone. So Callista Braum lane for Cyclone and Miracle as they look to really try to bully maybe the more inexperienced duo together of Fnatic and Pika Pika. I like that read from Contingent here. They just got that information super recently, the same as we did, but I think yeah. it's a clever way to kind of draft around it with with what they've got here on the blue side. Now finally gonna have to blind pick something for Eclipse here or for Sand Flame. I don't know why I keep mixing up who's on which side. What? <laughs> that's Orn. That's Orn. I'm told that's Orn. Uh, don't get excited here. Really excited yes. sort of, yeah, I wanted the Ramos here, but obviously Orn makes much more sense. Pretty easy engage button. You don't have to worry about many things happening because you just are playing the blind side of the matchup. Now, I was thinking maybe Cassandra could have been the option, but I feel like people 
if you're not extremely confident on your Kisante, it feels like it's been taken away from it. And okay, Eclipse immediately taking on it. The fact that you go for the Orn blind means that he wants to go for the Fury matchup. And that's the pretty bully side of things. Now, if it works out, you have an unstoppable monster in the side lane. If it doesn't, you have a champion that will barely have any utility for your team. So there's two sides of the coin, and I want to see where Sandflame all, uh, ends up being on, but or where, where Eclipse ends up being on. Yeah, see, I got you doing it too. Good then. But yeah, I'm excited to see this Fiora. It's n been quite a while since we've seen a Fiora be in, in any sort of play. Yeah, it has been. Uh, it's definitely been a pick that's fallen off a little bit in, in people's tier yep. lists. But the fact that you see, it, we heard it's Orn, right? Ramus is Orn. I think this is definitely the kind of pick that you can make it work up against, though. You can build up yep. a lead in one-on-one. -on -one. You're not going to get bullied too much in your first couple of levels. You're going to be able to get on your items. You're going to be unstoppable in the side lane coming into the later game. There's not a member of Contingent Esports that's going to be well-equipped to really be able to deal with you. And you've got solid disengage across the rest of the map here. Non-committal engage with that sword. Solar Flare, the Lilia, probably the queen of that kind of role, being able to kite back. Tristana, Varus, all going to be able to use their ultimates to be able to enable that sort of kite back playstyle as well. So if you want to play this game through Eclipse's Fiora as Komodo, I think that's definitely an option that's going to be available to you. Yeah, I think that's a fair way of trying to play it, like you're mentioning, especially the control in the side lane. There's realistically, if the Fiora gets ahead, no one that can make uh, triangle against her. You don't want to send Corky because he she blows her up. She blows him up. You don't want to send the Orn because he will slowly die. Kalista, same story as the Corky, and then the Brand. You don't want to have your smite completely far away from any objective. So the Fiora can be the wild card in this game if she's able to just completely run the side lane. I also want to put attention into the both of the marksmen and Komodo because once again. And it's not typical, but they are flexible. You can send Paris and Tristana mid lane and bot lane uh, to either of those positions and he can work out really well. It's just that Paris has just been such a staple in the AD carry position so far. And same for the Tristana in the mid lane that people haven't done that much. But I feel like it's still alive and if you want to try it out, it's not impossible to pull it off. Yeah, and now we've got a couple of things to resolve in game real quick, so we're going to throw it to a quick break, but we will be back in just a couple of moments as we take underway game number one between Contingent Esports and Komodo.
Welcome back, everybody, to Aegis Esports' coverage of the NACL Open Qualifier Group Stage, where Contingent Esports are taken to the rift in game number one up against Komodo, looking to take an early lead in today's fearless best of three, move themselves up to the winner's side bracket, and get themselves ever closer to qualifying for top eight. And to nobody's surprise, every champion went to the place we were expecting it. Kind of disappointing that there's no moving around, but makes complete sense here. Now, it's important to try and secure this first victory for Komodo because they are playing with Fnatic. So they need to build some sort of confidence that even without their starting AD carry, they can still do good. And I think this depends 100% on Doxa, Trickster, and Eclipse to pull off the sort of first match without your AD carry sort of game. Because that's where you need your players to, sta to appear, stand up, to shine. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and there's also, you know, it, it kind of goes without saying, and I don't want to focus too, too much on what Fnatic's champion pool may look like in this last-minute yeah. substitution, but you got to wonder how many different marksman champions Fnatic is really going to be comfortable playing and how long that pool will last in a fearless best of three, a full fearless best of three like this. There's four marksmen picked in this game number one. If this pace keeps up, there's going to be a lot off the board if you do end up going to a game number three. Oh, Eclipse. As Eclipse is just trying to be a menace in here at level one, going to take Wenwin down to about half HP, getting some procs, and just knows that Sandflame on this level one Orn is never going to be a threat to him in the one-on-one. -on -one. And Trickster, he actually, what Eclipse did there, because of the amount of time that he took, Trickster is now in the jungle. He can try and maybe go for a steal here if he's in the right position. Wenwin doesn't know. Oh, oh and Trickster's no. already level two. Wenwin in jungle oh. hell here as he goes down. Eclipse now trading with Sandflame. Sandflame's going to be able to take him out. Eclipse getting caught on the wrong side of the orb. Will fall down in the one-on-one, -on -one, but Wenwin tremendously set behind as he's going to lose his whole top quadrant. Yeah, and I think even with the death from Eclipse, obviously, as Fira, you never want to end up dying in that 1v1, especially blow your teleport as soon as possible uh, as that, but that is a pretty big victory for Trickster. And when Wenwin is this far behind, you kind of take away from the value of the brand as we see Doxa even firsting the flash off the mid lane. So great few minutes to start it off for Komodo. Only one that is suffering is Eclipse. Absolutely here, and... Going to be a rough trade here for Sandflame anyway, as soon as Eclipse gets back. So, well, yes, it is a tough position for Eclipse. That's the thing. 300 extra gold in the Orn. It's not going to change how this top lane goes too, too much. Uh, the fact that Eclipse is is further behind from being able to get their items than they would be, you know, if, if they were able to just chain together solo kills, sure. But... Given comparing this to a dead even lane state between Sandflame and Eclipse, the, the difference is not very substantial. So I think Eclipse will take that all day, every day, with how far behind Wenwin has now found himself set. Not being able to get the blue buff in particular on the brand. A tough position to be in for sure, and he's just out of stuff to farm. Yeah, it is a quote-unquote tough position for Eclipse, because as, as you were mentioning, Gordo, he just simply goes back, pushes the wave, even puts uh, Orn into a bad spot with that trade, and it feels like it didn't happen at all, because he's just going to come back without losing anything. The main factor that is really affecting this game is going to be, like you are mentioning, Wenwin, because he's behind, and also because when looking at lanes that could have been impacted by Wenwin, it was that top lane, and then also the bot lane with the lead that War Cyclone and Miracle were able to get, pushing the wave so consistently consistently, you can try and go for early dragons or try and even go for a potential dive with Miracle on the Braum. But now that when we, that when we is behind, it's just simply really difficult to pull this off. And oh, they are, oh no, look at the top side of the map. They are yeah. looking for Win-Win. Yeah, I mean, Win-Win's caught on the wrong side of dodge. Yeah. He's going to have to go in and execute to the tower here. Probably the right call for him to avoid giving away too much, but I mean, a tough position to be in regardless here for Ol' Win-Win as he just finds himself with even less time to farm, less time to get caught up. And another engage coming in from the bottom lane. No, War Cyclone flashing forward, looking for the kill on a Fnatic. Can't quite get the amount of damage he needs. But now Pika Pika gonna be the next target here. Already used the rend, so won't be able to pump out those last couple ticks of damage. The Komodo bot lane barely survives. 
Yeah, slight rent difference there to try and go for the better skill. Doesn't turn out. Fnatic survives by the skin of his teeth. And same for Pika Pika with no uh, potential reset on the uh, on the rent for the Kalista. Flash blown for the Kalista, but it's still three summoners down on the side of Komodo. And this is the sort of advantage you need to try and get after what is happening with Win Win. Absolutely here. And now going to be not too much traded back on the opposite side and Wenwin continuing to suffer, <laughs> losing his second spawn of wolves and just has to say, all right, don't, don't mind me, puts both his hands up, walks away. He knows that this area of the map belongs to Trickster and Doxa just trying to keep this push in up against Titan to make sure that there is no threat to Trickster during that time. Going to be keeping good control over the scuttlers as well. Ping's already coming out towards that bottom dragon. The first spawn of the grubby is going to be here before too long as well. And I do want to see Komodo try to flex this jungle advantage and see if they can try to take both objectives. But Trickster is very interested in power farming and just getting to his first item. So they may end up giving one up for the trade. Well, they are trying to come down here. Trickster is waiting behind and they are trying to respond to this gang that when he's trying to pull off. Absolutely, here he no diving on in, or Cyclone going to be the first target, he's already falling pretty low, Fnatic doing his best to pump out the DPS on the other side, the stun going to come throughout a miracle, and he nearly falls, we'll have to flash and stand behind me out to safety, good dodge on the piercing arrow from Fnatic, will be the only thing that saves him, I believe that was the enhanced W piercing arrow from Fnatic, but not quite having the damage to be able to take down the target. Yeah, it was a stronger version, but it's not going to be enough to take down the Brom there. Pretty nice dodge. Still, they are doing such a good job at trying to just stop Contingent from finding the right leads, the right place, because it's just simply not easy for them at all. The only point of advantage that they had, that a clear advantage that they have is this bot lane. But after that missed play, it's like they don't have clear avenues to try and make the game go their way. Absolutely here. And that has once again been a very solid early game coming out of Komodo here. They are going to be able to pick themselves up the first dragon. And uh, if Trickster wants this first spawn of grubs, I think they're pretty much his for the taking. I don't know exactly yeah. what Titan and Wenwin are going to be able to put together to stop it, especially when Eclipse has control over the top side and is already starting to roam down. Oh, and I don't know if you, if you were able to catch there, but Trickster also got the level 6 from the minions of the Tristana. So now they even have level 6 sleep for a potential fight if they are going to force it. It's really difficult for continue to try and answer here and Titan needs to be careful. They are sending both sports as well. They want to stop Trickster from gaining this advantage. Yeah, Miracle going to be the first one here, going to spot out Trickster as they trade some blows. Titan and Do Doxa do the same. But you gotta watch out for this sleep. I mean, it is still going to be a threat here. For a second, I thought Trickster cast that, but that was just him throwing out the Swirl Seed. And yeah, control over these grubs. I mean, Contingent probably make the right call here. They recognize, hey, this is not a four versus four that we want to tussle with. But they do just end up losing out on another objective, and they're not able to trade much for it, other than the fact that Wenwen is finally able to get his own wolves. Yeah, realistically, I think that this is one of the best objectives that Komodo could have gone for because they have a Fiora at this game as oh, Fnatic, no flash. Yeah, just okay. hanging out further back away that between turrets dive seeming like a bit much for War Cyclone and Miracle and Miracle's got to worry about potentially getting picked off himself here as Pika Pika arrives back to the bottom lane as well. Will disengage as now Docs are going in for the big trade. Titan advancing forward. Seems to think that he could take this and he might just be right. Swirl Seed connects. Here comes the Lilting Lullaby. Trickster coming in for the execute. Will find it and Doxa walking away with the first kill in mid lane. A nice slash at the end there by, as well by Doxa. Just evading the Q from the Corky and not dying just in case. But great first blood. Tatum was doing a really good job at trading into Doxa, but Trickster in the right spot at the right time. First lead, finding such a good lead and Komodo is still doing such a good job at just keeping so much control of the, over the way that this game is going. Even though Sandflame is doing a really good job in the top lane, even though War Cyclone is getting a big lead in the bot side, they are finding avenues for Komodo to get victories. Absolutely here. And really, really great setups from Komodo to be able to guarantee themselves that kill. The extended trade comes through, but Trickster is in just the right position to be able to come in and intervene and now finds himself at an even greater advantage thanks to that kill participation.
Now, going to just be looking to continue to maintain this control. The gold lead isn't that substantial, but you gotta remember that both sets of objectives going on over to Kubota are part of that as well. And where the gold is allocated gonna be a bit of an issue for Contingent as well, as 300 of that gold is on the Orn, is not going to help out Sandflame too, too much in his one-on-one -on -one pursuits. One of the funniest things that I wasn't thinking about, but now that I'm looking at how the game is going and I, it's, it's to consider, is the fact that they also have a marksman in the mid lane. So even if Fnatic is not an actual AD carry player, you have another AD carry to play with. So like, it works out well enough. Yeah, absolutely does. Now Miracle just clearing out some of this additional vision, looking to set up potentially around the bottom lane. See if they can piece themselves together something with their one advantage lane state. They do have that 30 CS lead to War Cyclone, and he is going to need to be the focus for this game number one at this stage. Is any kind of plan involving getting Win Win ahead of the curve it's been pretty much put to rest off the back of being taken out once and then being set even further behind in the farm afterwards as focus around mid lane continues here for Kaboto as Titan takes a rough trade with the Trickster there to support. Well, we'll say though, even though uh, Wenwin was put so far behind to start it off, he actually has been doing a pretty good job at coming back. He's two CS away from the Lilia, he actually has been able to catch up in experience as well. So even though the start was awful, he's been doing a really good job at just trying to come back and trying to answer back to what Trickster has been able to accomplish as so Eclipse. Ooh, nice stun back coming through there from the Repost. We'll be able to keep Eclipse safe. Same flame. Pretty tanky up there, especially haven't been able to get to the Bramble Vest a little bit sooner. Not going to be under any threat themselves. That second dragon is spawning here in about 25 seconds. You got to believe that that's where the focus is going to lie. Pika Pika doing their best to clear out some of the vision down here as Fnatic clears out the wave. And don't expect any to, to see any triggers be pulled up until the junglers start to get into the area. Already stealing away the birds is Trickster. Just a step ahead of Wen Win still kind of snowballing off of that early game. Yeah, trying to just put as much pressure as they can onto that side, although now I feel like they are going to spot Trickster because of that uh, Squire Balloon to try and check on the vision. It is going to be the Dragon Control completely for Komodo, and a second Dragon to try and get the Dragon Sacking going is always great to have. Now, I am in the position that this game particularly, the Grump value is actually quite good because you do have a Fiora. So your split pushing potential with the extra Grumps would have been great, and I feel like it's actually arguably a good idea to contest Grumps just so that you can give the Fiora and even the Tristana extra body with them. So definitely here. There is the Grubs already falling on down. Like you said, Contingent going to be able to secure those. Komodo going to be able to get themselves at a Dragon number two. And the fact that Contingent were able to equalize the Grubs definitely going to be good for them here. They are, of course, behind in the Dragon count, but the fact that they haven't fallen too far behind in gold means they've done a solid job in this early game. The question is going to be, is this Callista going to be strong enough for them to be able to stop additional Dragons from coming through? The fight breaks out in bottom lane. Pika Pika flashing in to make sure they're going to be able to get these stuff. Here comes Trickster for the attempt to turn around. War Cyclone gonna have to flash away and use the Fates Call to pull Miracle out to safety. That's three summoners down from the contingent bot lane in an aggressive fight they started. It is just not the right moment. Trickster in the right spot at the right time nullifies their attempt to build a lead for themselves bigger. Yeah, the most important thing was the position of Trickster there. Pretty good spot to find you himself in and oh, Eclipse going for the kill. Yeah, maybe going to be able to find the solo here. Sandflame doing a good job of keeping that one weak point sectioned off. Now, when win on the way up, Eclipse already used the repost, trying their best to dive out to safety. When win is on the way, turning it back on to Sandflame. Oh, Will be able to pick it up. Eclipse makes it a one for one. Really nicely done on the Fiora. Yeah, wanted to have his Fiora, hi Fiora highlight, and there he gets it one for one in that situation. Pretty good for Eclipse. It's also flash for flash, and does take away from the attention that Eclipse could have put into another lane. That being said, a one for one does mean that you push the wave, you lose some minions as a Fiora, and the rest of the map still trying to answer back in a lot of the situations. And for uh, the side of Trickster, for the Lilia, they are doing a pretty good job at taking away once again the camps from Winwin and also even potentially pushing into the ball in a little war cycling. Absolutely coming in from behind towards Fnatic, landing that first spear, not, but not able to keep on top from the slow from the Hail of Arrows. Going to be enough to get Fnatic out to safety. 
It kind of killed a 10 there by War Cyclone, but sadly, yeah, not quick enough to go for that. Oh. Yeah, War Cyclone going to be the next one, getting moved forward on towards. There's going to be the Chains of Corruption coming on across, slowing them up and going to be forced to disengage. Komodo able to get themselves out to safety and no harm, no foul. They continue to just neutralize this bot lane as best they can. War Cyclone's got a respectable 30 CS lead, but it's not going to be that sort of tremendous lead that's going to get you ahead on the entire map, and it's probably not going to be enough for War Cyclone to carry out these mid-game fights. But we'll see if they're able to turn that route. I think that it's more dependent on Doxa. Really nice jump, evading the attempt there. I think it's going to depend much, much more on Wenwin because he still has one of the best ultimates for trying to force a team fight, but also he was able to come back effectively into this mid game. Like, he actually is quite stronger than he was before and can try and fight back onto some of his members. Plus, there's barely any magic resistance, so his damage is going to be meaningful. Definitely. Now. That Rift Herald going to be the next target here. It has been alive for about two minutes now. Komodo seemed to want to change that. They were going to start it on up, but the positioning for Contingent is pretty solid here. They've got all four members together, and they've got Pika Pika and Fnatic sectioned off. Calling in the Forge God. There's going to be Fnatic forced to flash away, but two ultimates expended just to get that flash out of the Varus. Meanwhile, Eclipse still working on the top side turret. That does mean all five members of Contingent can advance towards this Herald. First turret will drop on the other side, but Trickster being forced off of the objective, and Contingent with a chance to take it. It's resetting, though. It's healing too fast, and now they might not be able to finish it. There's a TP to the bot lane from Eclipse trying to make this a two turret trade. Doxa trying to poke in towards the Herald, won't be able to secure oh, it. But now they're going in for the fight. Swirl Seed connects onto two, going to look for the three man sleep, not quite able to find it. Eclipse Wait, diving into the bottom lane, not going to be able to find the kills. As now they advance towards Titan Miracle coming back in out of that Fate's Call, getting forced back away as War Cyclone has got the charge on top of him. Trickster able to take out one, now jumping forward is Doxa on a win win. Doxa going to be able to clean up that kill, and that's two more over to Komodo! Oh my god, Titan's not done yet. Pika Pika getting engaged on, trying to create up the space for Fnatic, but it won't be enough. It's turned back around, and it's a double kill right back over to Titan. Contingent able to keep things even in the fight, but look at this bottom lane. Eclipse is going to take two turrets for this whole play. Yeah, two turrets plus the two kills. War Cycling is trying to answer back as well, but in the meanwhile, it's just simply a much better trade for Komodo. That being said, Titan and War Cycling did salvage a bit of it after killing Fnatic and killing Pika Pika, they were able to take away some of the extra value that Komodo got. But in general, Fiora now has is one and two with two turrets of gold into her pocket. She's closer to the Trinity Force. You have Tristana with two items completed as well. And she is going to be the main damage dealer for the Orn. So her being this far ahead is really crucial. And the Mountain Drake is already spawning, which means that now Komodo is one step closer to that Mountain Zoul. Definitely here. And now, going to be getting themselves that third dragon, like you said, keeping the Mountain Soul stacked on up. And that is going to be Komodo's win condition here. Is Titan going for the all-in here up against Eclipse, or I guess Eclipse going for it probably more yep. appropriately, as he's the one who issues the grand challenge, does force Titan to Valk over the wall, and that's going to be it for the fight. There's two more contingent members up here, but Eclipse one maybe more. a little too safe, and the recall means it's only going to be one. Eclipse going to be just fine. Yeah, it's surprising to see a Corky be able to actually out-damage the Fiora, but this is the Corky world we were living in currently, and at the moment, it, feel, it seems like Eclipse cannot 1v1 the Corky, but she's close to being able to do that. As soon as she completes the Trinity Force, I think that that's going to be one of the factors that the Corky has to be extra scared about. For sure. Sandflame, forced back away underneath this turret. Looking just fine here. He just continues to farm on up, but is not able to do anything about what's occurring over the rest of the map. And so far now, finds themselves in a turret deficit to Komodo, thanks to what Eclipse was able to clean up on the back of that play. I think it's an interesting call to not go for the fight, one that we don't see here in NACL queues too, too often. But I think it worked out really well for them as long as Eclipse is able to make good use of the gold that he just secured, having getting two isolated turret kills, including the first turret buff. But as long as he is able to make the use of those, will definitely be a very, very strong Fiora indeed in these side lanes. 
especially because with the Rift Herald, one of the main things that you always value is what you're able to accomplish with that. And so far, they haven't thrown out the Rift Herald yet. They are in looking for one of the main turrets. So if that's the case, then it's not like you're going to find yeah. massive value with that Rift Herald. And you get much more advantages by Eclipse getting that extra gold. And if he, if he gets Trinity Forest, which he got just now, that's going to be a much bigger difference maker. Definitely. And now, going to be... Look at bot, by the way. Yeah, TP in the bottom. <laughs> Eclipse just taking themselves another tower here. And will be able to do so pretty easily. Well, going to be just fine as there's going to be the ultimate coming on in here. Or rather, the Rift Herald coming on in. My mind is all over the place today as they are going to be able to clean that one up without too much trouble. Sandflame taking a rough trade up against Eclipse, and Eclipse is not slowing down on this push. I mean, Sandflame is not well equipped to stop a two-item Fiora from just keeping the siege going and contingent. They aren't starting a fight, and they aren't really backing off either. They do send back Titan eventually. Yeah, and this is the thing, the trade with the Rift Herald benefits much, much more the side of Komodo as Eclipse has to run away, but it's really difficult to try and stop Eclipse unless you commit the Ornhorn, but you don't want to commit it in this situation where you're not even sure you kill the Fiora. Definitely here. So there's going to be Trickster clearing on out this crab. Moving forward on towards Miracle as the next target. Ooh, Chains of Corruption came out of Fnatic there and did not quite find their home on a War Cyclone. He will be able to fall back towards that mid outer turret. Going to be just a little bit of resources expended there from Komodo, but not too much at the end of the day. There's going to be a recall coming through from Eclipse, and just 90 seconds to go until their potential soul. Komodo have pretty much everything going according to plan here. Yeah, they have complete control of the game, complete control over topside, which means that a Baron Rush is kind of difficult to pull off if you're contingent. And then side lane wise, the Corky is also having to answer to the Tristana, so it's kind of difficult to send someone that can wave clear much quicker onto this Fiora. And now Eclipse has just complete control of the side lane. Like this Fiora is so scary to try and deal with, and we just saw it. Even one trade from Eclipse, as long as you get a couple, uh, one Bidal or a couple of Bidals, the Orn can barely do anything. He doesn't even have the, um, what's called the Warm to regen every bit of health that he loses in a trade. So it's really difficult for you to find extra value. Absolutely here. So now the setup coming in here towards the bottom side, towards that dragon, contingent esports with a lot on the line for this reptile. They need to make sure that they are able to prevent it from going on through to Komodo or they are going to be even deeper in the hole here as that massive buff comes on across and makes it even harder for this brand and this Corky and this Callista to be able to try to burst out their targets. Just going to try to focus in on the mid here first. Oh, wait, like, tight end. Taking his one on one with Doxa here. Doxa trading back as much Ooh. as he can, but not going to be able to come out ahead. Gets the Buster shot out just in time. Titan flash flashed it. after him, but Doxa is able to flash in turn. But now Fnatic is up way too far. He's going to get caught out by War Cyclone. And Wen Win going to be the one who walks away with the kill. Komodo down a member. Doxa forced to retreat on the other side of the map. They might be at risk of losing this dragon, but Doxa did not recall. Eclipse is still splishing on the side lane. They're going up towards Baron. TDS. Yeah, they're going for Baron because in the main world, Eclipse is pushing by himself in the side lane. They have to try and go to respond to this Fiora. Maybe they try and collapse there, but with the decision making to go for the Baron buff, do they know that this is happening on the side of Contingent? They are rushing there, they are going to spot it, and probably they are going to be able to stop it. Yeah, we'll see if they can. Yeah, they actually... The rest of the members are arriving, but it is dropping pretty fast here. Down below 2k HP, oh, Sandman is flashing in. It will be smited down. Trickster able to secure it, and flashing over the wall. And Komodo trade one dragon for the Baron buff. They get a bot lane inhibitor turret while they're at it, and they are just pushing and pulling contingent all around the map. Yeah, it's a big questionable play from Fnatic that gets picked off in the mid lane, pretty much, before the Dragon even spawns. But after that, Komodo pulling off a really smart play with the bot lane push from Eclipse, as well as trying to go for the Baron buff. It did get scary, just because they were able to react pretty quickly on the set of Contingent, but at the end of the day, they do secure the Baron buff, they get the extra value now for Eclipse on the side lane, and this Fiora just become even scarier to try and go for or leave alone on one side. Absolutely here. Now Doxa getting forced back a little bit by Sandflame, but 
Again, just able to rocket jump his way out to safety, getting a little bit of extra armor pen in there as well to really start to make this Orin feel it. And the gold lead just grows bigger and bigger with every play. I mean, Komodo made some excellent calls there to be able to force Doxa off of the top side and pick off Fnatic, but somehow they still end up on the back foot at the end of the play. Yeah, sadly for them, even though they made a really smart choice in that situation, Komodo still find ways to make a pl the play be in their favor as Pika Pika may be getting spotted here, but it's not going to be the worst situation. And once again, just Eclipse getting a turret in the sideline and nobody being able to stop him. For sure here, Eclipse. And some good damage here on towards Sandflame once again, just immovable here. The flash forward from War Cyclone immediately caught out by the Chains of Corruption. Here comes Pika Pika on the side. Trickster trying their best to sustain through it. Gets the sleep and the Zonia's off in time. Doxa lost a 1v1 to Titan down to the bottom side, but I don't know if that matters as this mid lane fight has gone completely sideways for contention. Eclipse continuing to deal the damage onto Sandflame. We'll be able to take this top lane turret. There's going to be the Repost coming through on towards really? the call. The Forge got Eclipse. He in the grand challenge will be taken out by Titan, who's doing his best to keep this game alive, but the team is just crumbling around him. Yeah, the strongest tool is this actually Titan, but at the end of the day, I'm not sure if that even matters because the Corky, even with him trying to do everything he can, now the Kalista also doesn't feel like it's a strong enough. Fnatic is coming into game, Trickster doesn't die, and even if Doxa ends up losing on the side lane, you have now an open inhibitor to push with Eclipse and with Doxa who have double teleport available. And the Corky doesn't have teleport, so if he goes away, it's going to be much easier to collapse on top of him. Definitely here. And there is going to be another emergence from the base. Komodo get back, spend their winnings, and are all the more powerful coming in for what is going to be in two minutes, another rotation, an attempt on the Dragon Soul. This time there will be no Baron available to trade, so they got to be careful to not have members getting picked off this time around. But as long as they are able to stay safe, it is feeling increasingly difficult for Contingent to find themselves much of an angle to do anything in this game. It really is, and you just have to question what Contingent can try and go for to make this work out as best as possible. It's not impossible if they are able to find a couple of picks, particularly onto Fnatic and onto Eclipse, I would assume would be the main targets. But apart from those two, it just feels like it's really difficult to get the right plays going in their favor. For sure. The setup coming in, in and around this bot lane river. Once again, Eclipse coming out will be able to, or Solar Flare rather, Mixing up my ability names. We'll land on a two, but not gonna be able to convert into anything there for Komodo. And that does mean it's a big tool down for Pika Pika, but look at Doxa now, putting on his best Eclipse cosplay, getting into the split push game as Sandflame, forced underneath these turrets, can't do much to defend them. Gets dodged away from, here comes Titan on the recall. Doxa trying his best to disengage, doesn't get the flash point yet. Wen Win caught on the other side though, it's gonna be a cross map trade. And now there's no jungler for Contingent with Dragon Soul coming up in 30 seconds. Yeah, that pretty much means it's going to be free dragon for the side of Komodo when Mountain Soul now to add on top of the Fiora that was extremely strong. Just feels like adding insult to injury for the side of Contingent. I like the pick that they went for onto Doxa, but Doxa was just pushing even the turret. So he gets extra damage onto the turret. There's nothing to stop the Tristana from getting the extra damage. And it's going to be much easier for them to try and go on the side lane and get that extra objective as Ooh, great vision. Absolutely here. Now setting up in and around that dragon. Komodo going to have the members. They're going to start out here on towards that mountain Drake. Trickster looking to be able to land these swirl seeds. Looking to be able to find the big sleep. Wen Win still just coming out of the base. Not going to be able to challenge for the soul. It is secured by Trickster. Flashing into the middle. A four man sleep out of Trickster will allow an easy cleanup for the Komodo squad. Titan is picked off. Eclipses in the bay. Focusing down on a Wen Win has the back of a Doxa to finish him off, and Komodo will close out a dominant game number one. And Trickster may have found the four-man sleep, but it's Eclipse that is putting them down at the end. Great game by Komodo all around. Important thing for them to take out of this game is that Trickster was pretty consistent all around the game. I will say he had one or two maybe positioning mistakes that can be corrected, but apart from that, he barely died in lane. He didn't commit big egregious mistakes that really could cause the game in certain situations. And importantly, even if his, put, if his pull gets hit here, I think that the biggest factor here 
there was how Trickster and the team played around just shutting down Wenwin. And if that's going to be the case, it's not much on the champion pool, but more so in how the team is going to play around that on the set of Contingent. Yeah, definitely the case here. And what a really good controlled game coming out of the side of Komodo, I gotta say. Yep. I mean, if you look at just the scoreboard at the end of the day, especially the kill counts there, it's not gonna look like it was kind of a super dominant one-sided game, but I think in practice and off the eye test, it really feels that way, right? Every yeah. time a play gets made by contingent, it is traded for 150% more on the opposite side by Komodo. They lose some carries, they lose some one-on-ones, yeah. but they are always getting objectives in trade, and they're just building up their lead more and more the whole way through, regardless of what's happening around the map. Did not look like it particularly mattered that Fnatic wasn't quite as comfortable the bottom lane lost gracefully and was able to still come up with the kills at the end and fulfill his role. Exactly. You can see how Komodo was just able to find the better place in a lot of the situations. And importantly, how even in losing situations, they were actually not losing, but coming even or better in, in a lot of them. So it's important for Contingent to try and take the good out of the bad in this game because they did great plays. It's just that Komodo found the right answers. And I think going forward, what they need to realize is when we make this sort of great play, if we can magnify that or deny from the enemy team, that's where we really are looking for. Absolutely here. Well, with that, we're going to throw to a quick break while we get geared up for game number two. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be back in just a few moments as Contingent and Komodo face off yet again.
Welcome back, everybody, to Aegis Esports' coverage of Komodo versus Contingent here in the NACL Open Qualifiers. Komodo taking a solid controlled game number one up against Contingent. We're getting into draft for game number two already. Yeah, really good game coming in from the side of Komodo. They knew what they were wanting to play with, especially with how they drafted, and they got great advantages. Now, going into this game too, we have to see if they're going to keep the same bands on both sides or if they're going to change up anything, especially considering that 10 champions are out of the pool. Yeah, absolutely here. And now going to be... 10 more of them, or at least six more of them in phase yep. one, getting taken out as well. No Aurora at all, TDS. I mean, just, just drifting on by. Maybe those hotfix nerfs just a little bit too much for these two squads, or they just don't have the reps put on in. I mean, Titan and uh, Doxa both really enjoying some of these marksman mid laners, it feels like. Caitlyn gonna get taken off the board here as well as Komodo seem to want to try to prevent some of these really lane dominant bot laners from coming out yeah. through again. I, I understand. I, I could vibe with that. Understandable, I agree as well. The Caitlyn, not something that you want to try and go against. And especially now that you're on blue side, the Ash and the Ezreal feel like a champions that you can try and prioritize on the side of Komodo if they don't get banned away. They did ban away the Ash, but the Ezreal could be an option for Fnatic until it gets banned away. So it looks like I think that this game is fortune, Jin, have to be prioritized for Fnatic because they are not that difficult to go for and they are going to be pretty good for the team in general. Yeah, certainly here, so there's going to be quite a few oh, well. more marksmen taken off the board here. And that's, again, that's just got to be pinching Fnatic's pool a little bit here, man. I don't know what marksman this guy plays, but he's got to be running out of, even a marksman main has got to be running out at this point. You're starting to get towards the bottom of the well here. It's a tough position to be in, but we'll see how they are going to be able to adapt to that for him. Contingent now with their first crack at what could be a bot lane rotation. Could try to take one of those priority junglers as well. The Zyra still up and alive and available, but instead they're going to lock in the Sejuani. Going for a much tankier option. A champion that even from behind can almost always find good value if they are able to get a good ultimate or a good engage. Now, it does mean that I feel the Contingent side is going to try and take a different approach with what they are going to try and focus on. And I think that this has to be for Sandflame to have a much better lane, right? Like it cannot be the similar like tank top laner that you're going to opt into, but instead maybe something like a Renekton, like an Aatrox to make this a 20 find a little bit more value in general, as well as the bar coming through so interesting option of champions down there that are going to be seen the rebel was banned in the first game so we're going to get pika pika to showcase why it was banned and then the bard not a champion that we get to see a lot but it's a great champion in general and can make a lot of plays happen yeah, I feel like this is, listen, if you lose access to the Caitlyn, right, you can't play this more lane dominant bot lane style. I do kind of like the idea of just going for the bar, trying to get unlocked, you know, rely on Fnatic potentially struggling a little bit in having to play solo yeah. lane AD carry and just having to play safe there. It's, it's a position he's not super familiar with. And you just get to roam around on Bard and do Bard things. So I, I like the read for Miracle here. Here's going to be Kindred okay. locked in for the jungle, presumably. So that's going to be going on over to Trickster in the jungle. See how they're going to be able to do on it as... Uh, this is gonna take Fnatic's pick all the way to the second round. So another set of bands coming on through. And I'm guessing it's going to be Misfortune and Jin unless Contingent pick one of the two here. It's going to be the Yone potentially here. So it means that one of the two is going to be banned away once again here, if not the two. And that means that Jinx and Seri feel like the only other options that they can try and opt for. But if you're a fanatic, uh, scaling AD carry is not a bad choice. Like you can just play it safe, farm it, and then be able to execute on the later stages of the game, which I think you probably could be capable of. I'm looking more so at the mid lane though, because with both junglers already picked, with both AD carry mid lane or the three AD carry mid laners that are kind of picked consistently in the mid lane out of the picture with Lucian, Tristana, and Corky out, what are they going to opt for? And I think that's, that's why the Blank did come in the first ban, and I think something like an area potentially maybe looked at here as well. The guys are not a bad shout as well, though. Yeah, the other thing is, like, people have been playing the Zeri mid lane a fair yeah. bit. We, we've gotten to see a lot of that one, so could be that, that Dox is waiting on something like that. We'll see if Contingent want to ban it away here. They do have a chance to do so. 
uh, if, if yep. they do want to try to pinch that pool a little bit more. The other thing, like you mentioned, the MF, the Jin, uh, those are often picks that I, I feel like we're usually seeing them in the bot lane when there's another marksman mid, but the misfortune mid is definitely something I've seen as well already. Yep. We saw Jin mid as well, too. I think Insanity played a game of it, if I'm not wrong. So definitely a couple of options there. That's, that's kind of a marksman ban. The Twisted Fate. Yeah, technically speaking, with how it's been played, it is a marksman ban, but we haven't seen much of the Twisted Fate in, in, in the marksman position theory. once again, and it's going to be Komodo banning the series. I think it has to do with com uh, Contingent having that first ban here, probably not wanting to give it up, and it just banning it away, but the Jin and the, and the Misfortune are still available, so could be picked for one of the two. And then in the mid lane, I'm still thinking that Aurora could be an option if they are willing to pull it, because the champion was looking quite... quite quite great uh, when it was played yesterday it was roy Bob, so it certainly was one of the better mid laners pulling it up but it's not surprised it wouldn't be a surprise to see it coming through as the six to come down with the bard and i like the poke bot lane here trying to mess up with the rail trying to mess up with anything that fanatic has and some a champion also that can take down turrets quickly which means that if you get the push consistently you can try and just immediately rotate the lane and try and take down turrets as fast as you can yeah, and now there's going to be that Ziggs locked in, like you said, coming in to support that. Yone is the primary AD damage dealer. The Ziggs going to just be chilling down there, trying to farm on up and do a very good job in the 1v2 or the 1v1 as that bard is going to be roaming on around. The Jin going to be the lock in. I assume that's going towards the bottom lane with Kindred supporting in the jungle. And now you can go whatever kind of mid laner you want here. Yep. I do. You could even go the Rumble mid and give something to Eclipse, but I would think you just go something powerful mid lane and looking at that Jace. All right, the Eclipse other... is wearing all the AP pants this game. The other AD option that was kind of left when thinking about the AD mid laners potentially, the Jace not a bad option, has great poke. It is going to be on Eclipse like you were mentioning, but based on the previous game, I feel like it's not a bad bet to go for Eclipse to go to be your sole AP damage with how he performed. But now you do get the counter pick for Contingent and can be a, a Camille, not necessarily a bad choice. We'll take some bad trades at the start, but she can scale really greatly and the sideline pressure that the Camille has, plus also the Sejuani Camille combo can be scary for Eclipse in the top lane. Unless it's, a J unless it's a rumble mid, by the way. It's just mentioning, unless it's a rumble mid. Yeah, unless it's rumble mid, which I suppose is technically possible. I think that Camille's probably going to have an equally solid time up against Camille and or the... Uh, or, sorry, Camille's going to have a solid time uh, up against either the Jace or the rumble. I don't think it makes too huge of a difference for Komodo. But they do definitely still have that flexible option alive. Yeah. Uh, Jace definitely a character I associate with Eclipse as well. I agree, yeah. They can play both sort of styles there in that position. And the other good thing about the Jace is that with the long range poke, you do have another tool for the Jin to get extra body with your W, with your ultimates, and try and get lockdown going for your team. You also technically have an AD carry anyway, so it's not like you need the consistent damage from the Jin or from the Jace. You have the Kindred, that if she scales accordingly to what the game needs, she can be a pretty strong AD carry coming into this game. For sure. And now, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see if Titan can reprise the sort of solid performance that we saw in game number one. I think he did very well in the Corky. The fact that he's able to yeah. get some of those solo kills up against Doxa and was able to, like, win out on so many of those trades, I, I think was very impressive from him. Mm -hmm. And they're definitely putting some extra eggs in, uh, in the Titan basket here for game number two, right? Not only is he piloting the Yone as, like, a melee carry, and, yes, they have one in top lane with Sandflame as well, but they're also leaning even further into these melee carries with the Sejuani in the jungle. They want to be able to have some really successful ganks towards mid and top lane, getting the most value out of this Sejuani, getting those permafrost stacks up faster, and they're yep. going to try to leave the likes of War Cyclone on their own in the bottom lane just to farm it up and let Miracle move around to the bar to help out those very same ganks. So it's all about the solo lanes for Contingent in this game number two, uh, a bit of a different look than what we saw in game number one. 
Yeah, the way to try and make this game work out for the set of contingent is you play off of your Joni and your Camille. You have the easier way to stack it as well from them. And then coming to the mid game with one item on both of them, you try and go for the picks. You have the Camille for the lockdown really easily, as well as with the Sejuani, you have great lockdown. And the Corky ultimate, if I'm not wrong, actually covers the area of the Camille ultimate. So you can lock down targets and also force them into a weird spot with those three ultimates. Really nice setup that contingent does happen. Titan can be a pretty strong champion as well in the side lane with the Camille, if they are not careful enough. Yeah, absolutely here. Keeping our eyes on what these picks are going to end up going or where these picks are going to end up going. We're getting word yep. from production. It is Rumble top. It is Jace okay. mid. So it is going to be Eclipse piloting the Rumble. It is going to be Doxa piloting the Jace. And I think that's yeah. a solid pick for Doxa. It's definitely a champion I think of when I think of him as well. So wouldn't have been too surprised to see the Jace in either place. The Rumble mid would have been a bit of a surprise. So going to be his classic Jace mid. Yeah, it is still a champion that does give you the control over the mid lane, which is something that Doxa does like to have. And it also provides you enough support for that so that the Kindred can try and move freely on the map, right? Like one of the biggest things with the Kindred is that you don't want the enemy jungler or anyone to just go into your jungle and try and stop you from farming. The Jace and the Rumble provides you control in two lanes that you can just push. And then with that control, you get the free CS, you get the free um, invades into jungle, plus getting the extra marks. And that way you get to snowball the game much easier as the Kindred. Absolutely here. And now going to be just waiting on this spec delay for a couple extra minutes i do want to take a moment to to look at what engage options are available for both sides because you do notice that komodo are very reliant on pika pika to be able to get yep. these fights started it needs to be the rel leading the charge unless you can get something some kind of fancy little combo here between the likes of the kindred and the Jin. you know you could get mounting dread for the big slow guarantee yeah, a deadly please. flourish off it but that's a lot of steps that's multiple members in yeah. separate positions can't let anybody intercept the w it's a tough ask meanwhile they've got a lot of ways to get in on the side of contingent i think in that sense this is an easier composition to play you do you are really reliant on melees for your damage output though and that's the part where this gets a little bit difficult to play especially into kindred because she is going to lambs respite her team and she's going to buy you some of that extra time that you might need to be able to get out of there Things are going to get really complex with the Bard ultimate getting involved and the Hextech ultimatum it, and all that nonsense. With that. Yeah, there's there's definitely some space for things to get messy, but it's it's going to be an interesting one for sure to see how these fights kind of start to break out. And if Komodo aren't able to like stay on the front foot and, and be playing a really dominant macro style of game the way that they were in game number one, I could see them starting to have trouble if Contingent are able to take control as, as they just kind of have very one dimensional ways of getting fights started. Yeah, the way is, like you're mentioning, is pretty much on the rail. The long-range engage from the Jin, it's difficult to pull up, but it's not impossible. The problem is that when you have Sejuani that can send an ultimate from one screen to the other and can find a target really easily, when you have a bard that can do the same, but even cancel out on some of the champions, so it's not only one champion, but multiple, you can cancel out on that. Then you also have the CC from the Yoni ultimate or the Camille ultimate. You have multiple ways to make fights happen without having to overly commit on the side of Contingent, where on the side of Komodo, the pretty straightforward one is where everyone commits. And in that way, it's a scary factor to try and play with as we go into the game and we are going to get our questions answered here with what Komodo is going to be doing with Pika Pika. Now, plenty on the line here for Contingent as they want to keep this series alive and get themselves yeah. to a potential game number three. Komodo, the heavy Ooh. favorites for this group, you've got to believe. Looking to see what Wait they can me. accomplish, but the level one engage here, Pika Pika. Starting a little bit of that tech we saw with the Deadly Flourish. Start going for the scoop. Win win forced to flash away. And that's going to be a good win there. I, I call that a victory for Pika Pika. Does get the flash out of the enemy jungler earlier on. That's going to eliminate a lot of early gank paths. The price is that Fnatic started Deadly Flourish. It shouldn't matter too, too much. But not having Dancing Grenade means that they are going to struggle to match the wave clear of the Ziggs and the Bard. 
Yeah, it's going to be bothersome, but it's not going to be the end of the world. In comparison, though, in contrast, when with without, without Flash, I think you actually lose out traits against Trickster because Trickster can actually outplay you uh, with how the mobility from the Kindred works. And that just means that it's going to be a bit more difficult as the Sejuani to get most value out of your champion here. The good thing, though, is that he's not getting his red buff stolen, which did happen in the previous game. Absolutely here. And now... Going to be looking at a potential bottom side start here for Trickster. Going to be that top side start for Win Win. So not only does he not have Flash, but they know exactly where he is. So going to be a pretty smooth sailing early game for Kaboto. At least it should be, barring any kind of mishaps in these kinds of solo or two on two matchups. Eclipse getting taken a little bit low there from the early trades from Sandflame, but seems pretty comfortable with the position and with his lot in life up here. And Eclipse is trying to move forward here, but he should know that the Sejuani is hovering on the top side, so he cannot go that far forward because they do have a pretty good duel there to try and lock down a champion and just blow him up as soon as possible. Now, Granite's vision control there just in case to cover on the Sejuani, and it, maybe it's not going to be as bad for Eclipse as also Kindred is trying to come top side as quickly as possible. Yeah, it definitely is here. So, going to be Win Win clearing on out some of that vision. Jungler's both aware of what's going on, at least Trickster's aware that Win-Win was up there. Doesn't know whether he's stayed or left, but looks willing to take that fight anyway. Now knows that Wenwin -win isn't here, or at least it's a pretty good idea that he isn't here. Is going to pursue the dive. This is risky with nobody too well set up to protect, but they will be able to pick up the first blood, and they even juggle the aggro to get out alive. Very well done by Komodo. That was beautiful, by the way. They get the initial attack with Trickster, forcing the aggro onto himself, and then just a flash ignite flame spader on top of the Camille. You get your damage out at the Rumble, and you have to not, and you don't worry about it at all, because the Kindred is tanking everything. She even saved the flash, so it's not like Trickster loses out on anything. And it was just in the right timing as well, because it's as when win is going away. So you get the value from the Kindred, you get the value from the Rumble, and you don't lose anything at all with that play. I also, I'm not 100% sure, I think the Kindred had the stack on the Camille uh, propped just at the right time as Sidon. I, I believe so as well. We'll see when we get over to the Kindred, but there's going to be Titan taken very low. Like you said, forced to flash even. Doxa and Titan trade those summoner spells. Let's take a quick glance at Trickster, if we can see how many marks he has. He's got the one. one. He got the so, grab, so he didn't get the, the Yeah, marks didn't quite like get it marinated onto Sandflame. Unfortunate, but, you know, it, it, when you're already cashing out with a very solid early game, level one game plan, Sometimes you, you can't get it all. You can't have everything. Yeah, it worked out how you need it to, so as long as you get that, it's fine. As Trickster, and you will get probably more chances in the future, especially with that first blood and the extra damage as the Kindred. You probably will get a really good amount of chances to try and force here as you are looking for War Cyclone. There is no stack though, so probably not going to be able to get an, an extra one here. Here you go. Nice extended trade there from Eclipse, going to keep Sandflame low. When wins getting involved up there, though. Kind of caught on the wrong side, doesn't have the flash. Good dodges so far, but the stack up with the permafrost yeah. is too much. Has the shield walking away. When win oh, taking extra turret shots. You've got to be kidding me, Eclipse. Twice in this series, turning around. 2v1 plays and coming up with an extra kill. No way, Sandflame going back in for more. He might die here just barely survives yeah eclipse there gets his skill but then kind of throws away the little bit of a lead that he got that being said though when win once again losing out on one of these potential trades and you're putting yourself behind of the kindred once again in this sort of trading and eclipse doesn't lose much because yeah he may lose i, I think he loses this wave but the biggest difference is it's not really a big difference compared to what is happening with trickster and when win and he's just going to keep on getting stronger as they are sending a up here for Trickster though. Yeah, going to be coming on up. There's Titan getting focused on towards Trickster. Trying to flash back away. Does get hit with the chain Ooh, CC. Nice. He is done for. Wen Win gonna walk away with that kill credit. And Titan manages to stay alive, but War Cyclone in the 1v2. Not able to keep far enough away and throw bombs all day long. Fnatic walks away with the kill. He actually even flashed, so they forced onto War Cyclone. They are able to get not only the flash, but the kill for Trickster. So it's in general, it just feels like it's a one-for-one one in everywhere in the map. But the extra value... Ducks out. Should be fine. 
Yep, looking like he's gonna be able to hold a strong for now. And those grubs are going to be the focus, so. Eclipse working on those. Are you getting one single-handedly as Trickster comes on up to clean up the rest? I feel like the main important part after getting this this grubs, obviously, it's the fact that even though Trickster wasn't or is not really that far behind from Win Win now, the fact that now he's behind in terms of the marks is crucial for them. Like for contingent, this is one of the best things that could happen to you because you need the tri the kindred to not get her mark timings going. Like you need her to be as far behind as possible, and this does put a stop onto what the Kindred can accomplish. Yeah, for sure. Good job to try to shut down what Trickster has been building up for a lot of this game thus far. It's going to be pretty important here if you're Contingent Esports trying to get yourself into a competitive position. Sandflame picking up that kill earlier on, going to be pretty important as well. Remember, so much of this game is going to be about these melee carries. You really want Titan and Sandflame to be in favorable positions for that to work on out. Trickster coming up top once again, and Sandflame just can't resist. Has to keep going in for these trades with Eclipse. But Miracle and Wenwin might make this an unfair play. Miracle coming on over with the Magical Journey. They're going to try to focus on down Eclipse, but Sandflame gets melted down first. It's a one-for-one -one trade so far as Trickster trying to disengage for the play. Flash forward from Wenwin to be able to land the perfect block, and that should be a kill. A double over to Wenwin. Yeah, great flash in there and two for one, really nice there. The only victory for Komodo is not only the kill, but also the mark going in favor of the Kindred. But this Bard is doing his job. He's moving around the map. He's finding pretty good plays. He's getting a lot going for the team. And that's what you really ma value here with everything that you need to stack up as a win-win. Oh, and win going to get knocked further away. Pika Pika advancing forward, looking for the shuffle nice back block. in. Miracle getting in oh. to that magical journey. They follow, but they right. find themselves face to face with Sandflame and Titan over the wall with the fate sealed. Cleans up to Komodo over a grass and are still doing so. Eclipse going to try to trade one more back. Will be able to get it, but this is going to be at the cost of his own life. Win Win's got to stay alive, though. So that's a shutdown over to Eclipse. He's not done. He wants as many killed as he can get miracle finally gonna be able to cut down the rumble but eclipse cleans up another two for one in a numbers disadvantage situation what is with this guy okay gordo we're officially in a fiesta this is a fiesta game <laughs> and we're just witnessing happening six to seven at eight minutes and everyone is dying everywhere trickster trying to get another mark but it's resetting I, it, he gets it i think he actually gets three marks after what was happening in the top side so for trickster it's kind of a victory for the side of komodo not so much because they did lose a couple of members here and there and uh, bot lane is bot lane. Like, uh, War Cyclone is happy because he gets to push and gets a lot of minions, but everywhere else is just complete and utter chaos. I must feel this yeah, I mean, and I gotta focus up onto Eclipse oh, here. This no. guy has been. All right, hang on. Wait, maybe I can't. Maybe maybe the fates have something else in store for me. As no, wait, we're trying to set up another play out of Fnatic. Okay, okay, everybody's chill. Never mind, Fnatic's getting ganked. Pika Pika's here. He finds me Miracle. And Wen Win going to lead off the dive. Good dodges from Fnatic, Ooh. though. Able to avoid the CC, avoid oh, the damage, reply with the barrier. Oh, Wen Win's taken down by Pika Pika, and Miracle might not be long for the world either. Not quite landing these shots, but it is going to be a double kill to the Rel. Pika Pika walking away with 6 hundo. Okay, Fnatic, pick up a stunned miracle there for you. You had the chance to get that free <laughs> kill. <laughs> like, he was actually just stunned in play. But anyway, it's a two for nothing. I feel like that's a big victory for Komodo. And the game is just once again, it's crazy, but it's once again in favor of Komodo after everything that has transpired. Yeah, absolutely here. I mean, the gold going out of Pika Pika, maybe not the biggest thing in the world, although they do get the uh, the Zeke's Convergence there on towards the Rel, so it's better than nothing. It's a pretty good item on the Rel. Oh, Fnatic's stuck in a one-on-one, -on -one, trying to get the Snare on a War Cyclone. Cannot find it. We're chill for now. Oh, they're making it close, though. They're making it dangerous. War Cyclone's going to take one right. He's dead. He's dead. Oh, okay. I get it why, I get why, like, Trickster was on the side, so if he dies there, he he was dying anyway, so I respect that. When when he's dying, though. Oh my god, Eclipse is still trying to trade oh. one for one. No way is this guy gonna walk away with another kill. When win finally able to take him down without losing his own life, gonna be working on these grubs at the same moment. Pika Pika on the way up, though, has Doxa at his attack. One this. big shock blast could take When win down, intercepted by the remaining members of Contingent to keep their jungler alive, and these grubs are all Contingents.
Okay, good news for Komodo fans. Ducks and Pika Pika learn to be to be contained, to not go in blindly to a fight that they were 100% going to lose. As oh, oh okay. okay, it's fine. Okay, the footwork from Doxa. He's still got it. He's getting out of there. Miracle going to get caught in rotation here. It looks like does blow up the blast coat, but recognizes the threat that he's under. Is going to be just fine. There's going to be the soul unbound out of Titan. Doxa looking for the trade. Does not connect the shock blast. And that's going to guarantee that Titan's still in a pretty healthy position. Yeah, Titan's still doing a really good job at training here. Dox as well. The training pattern between these two mid laners has been quite fun because it's not like it's just Dox winning it out. Like Titan has been doing a really good job. But really exerting the pressure as a miracle. Yeah, miracle. Maybe get a bit big for his britches <laughs> on the roaming around here. Just because your bar doesn't mean that everywhere is safe. And he will be taken down. Nearly 100% KP for Miracle on this bar this game, by the way. 7 out of 8 will be caught on a misstep and taken off the map. And that will give Kubota the opportunity to secure themselves the first dragon at 12 minutes into the game. This is not going to be the quick soul of game number one, TBS. Yeah, finally. Oh, Titan. Ooh. Mid laner v mid laner. Mano e mano. Titan not getting knocked back into the wave. Or not packed in the turret, rather. And no more shock blast from Doxa means that Titan will be able to get out of there with his life. Respect the attempt, it doesn't go into a kill, but I like this light for footwork between each other. Now, with this first dragon dying, it is going to be quite a while before we actually get a soul. But at the very least, they finally did take down the dragon. With everything that was going on in the map, it was just, it felt like it was just going to be kills as, oh, okay, sampling escapes. Every time we try to talk about something different, I feel like one of these players is at 10 HP. I'm going to take a gamble here and think I can talk about some narrative here. Oh, 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 I've manifested something. Equalizer comes down, Sandflame is forced out. Surely nobody dies here. As here comes the Tempered Fate, Doxa walks that one out. We're done. We're chill. Okay, but actually, fit no, behind fixing. them, so there's something going on here. My man, we just saw these guys fit. You have to know that this is happening. Miracle going to be able to clean up Trickster. Pika Pika now going to be the next target. Sandflame waiting in the wings. Eclipse coming down as well. Got to respect this rumble damage, although Titan, it doesn't look like he wants to do so. Looking for a big wombo combo coming on across with that Hextech ult. The beta Eclipse will be taken down, and Titan can still look for more. Doesn't have access to the ultimate to close the additional gap. And that does mean that Doxa and Pika Pika will be able to walk away, but Eclipse and Trickster giving back a couple for free there to Contingent. Yeah, they get the extra damage, they get even a little bit of poke here. They get really good kills in the process though, Fnatic does get the plates down there in the bot lane, so he's going to make the gold go in favor of Komodo. But, you were just saying, it feels like as soon as we want to make a point, they are forcing a fight elsewhere, and this time around, uh, can they find Fnatic? They <laughs> we're really, we're manifesting yeah. these this time, man. It's Fnatic fully caught out here, should be going down. I don't even think there's a dream of being able to trade something back, and they give that gold over to War Cyclone. Yeah, pretty quick to get the kill immediately. Nice kill for War Cyclone. He's a slightly behind of the Jin, but it's not the end of the world. And everywhere in the map, it just feels like everything can go completely haywire in one second. This time around, though, finally, I feel like for the first time, we will get a bit of peace, and War Cyclone will get the first turret of the game. All right, Ziggs, gameplay, all according to plan. Is they will be able to get that for War Cyclone, and that will be the gold lead given over to Contingent here, as they're doing much better in game number two than they were able to do in game number one. And I think the game plan of just letting War Cyclone wave clear and moving Miracle around the map has worked very well for them. He's been a big driver of a lot of these plays. Still at over 90% KP here, doing a fantastic job on the Bard. I do want to highlight Eclipse, even though he's kind of fallen off since the point I was trying to make earlier. He's been rock solid in defending up against these ganks in this series, and it's given Komodo a lot of leeway to play with. If he wasn't making these kind of crazy tradebacks in 1v2, 1v3 situations, Komodo would be really behind right now. Yeah, that could be a difference maker. I feel like at this instance in the game, as Pika Pika gets a little bit collapsed on, but shouldn't be having to worry too much, I feel like the gameplay of crashing your head against the wall and trying to see if it works out, it's not that effective in a lot of the situations. Like, it can work out, but it doesn't work out every time. And we saw Eclipse dying multiple times in, not even in gang attempts, but in situations that he shouldn't die at all. So if they are able to stop that and just let Eclipse do the sim the thing that he was doing before, trading one for two, then that is completely fine for them. As they are pushing even Doppling. Like, he's just split pushing this series, it feels like. He really is. And it has worked out decently well for them so far. 
There's now going to be the Siege coming in through for mid lane from Contingent. They want to be able to use War Cyclone to continue to pressure these towers, but there's more members here for Komodo. Got to be aware of the risk that that represents. Eclipse, though, quite a bit of damage with these rockets. Wow. Yeah, it kind of counts as poke, but it shouldn't be the, po the same level of poke as the, as the six. And they are training really effectively here. I was expecting to see maybe a potential fight for something around this mid lane, but with the Herald already down, with Dragon spawning until 45 seconds, 40 seconds now, it doesn't feel like they are going to try and overly commit. Maybe now they are getting back into the map, though. Maybe now. We will have to see is going to be redeploy onto the map from contingent everybody getting back spending their money prepping up for the dragon number two fight which i do believe will be hextech chemtech one or the other chemtech, chemtech. it's gonna be one of the ones that doesn't have a functional uh icon how long has Maybe. it been by the way i think it, Ever they, since they introduced like them <laughs> like, it's yeah, day like, one. they were introduced like two seasons ago if i'm not wrong yep uh, okay Titan Ooh. fight potentially breaking on out here and Eclipse taken to about half here comes some bombs from War Cyclone to try to poke them out as best they can but they're gonna regroup in and around the dragon trying to burn it down it's free Samson yeah. is not even here yep. gonna be easy peasy for Komodo avoiding out that poke damage maybe looking for a fight though Pika Pika approaching getting ready to remount oh. Root going to connect on a miracle getting focused down with that Fine. equalizer but not gonna be able to land the shot oh, yeah. him coming in off the TP it is a one for zero so far Komodo gaining the first blood in the fight and now they're gonna be able to melt oh, down no. stand flame so much damage comes through from Eclipse and he will be able to claim the kill now win-win getting chased down on the other side not gonna be able to connect that deadly flourish from the Fnatic they will be able to disengage with the rest of their members alive that is a fight win for Komodo all of the side lane pressure surrendered for contention and Komodo will continue to take down towers yeah they get enough damage to be able to keep on pushing they get the first turret in the mid lane down and they win the team fight as well i was looking out for how miracle ended up dying there because the bullets from the gene messed out but i think he just got burned alive from the rumble and just enough damage to be able to meld this bard away from the team fight and then after that the camille coming in wasn't necessarily a bad plan but when you already are down one of your members and the rest cannot follow up on your engage it just simply feels like you're not going to accomplish much as the camille as Eclipse flashed away. Yeah, definitely here. And Eclipse has to keep himself safe, has to keep himself alive. So we'll have to surrender a little bit of the side lane pressure there. But big play early on in that fight to be able to layer down a nice equalizer and just get Miracle burning. Do you think that was what ended up doing him in at the end of the day? Like you said, TDS. And means that Komodo now once again find themselves with the gold lead despite a little bit of a hiccup earlier on. From War Cyclone claiming all those objectives, and yeah, definitely feels like they just weren't ready for how hard Komodo were willing to force that fight, and they end up giving up quite a bit. As Sandflame could have taken that top lane outer turret, right, uh, or at least forced yeah. the TP out of Doxa, but instead, it's Sandflame's TP that's forced in a fight that's already losing. Exactly, they were forced in that bad situation, and they just simply couldn't follow up accordingly. As now, ooh, Doxa missed up though. Yep. Lucky. Not landing the shock blast is going to be an issue, and now Doxa getting collapsed onto flashes away from two ultimates. Oh no! Both Miracle and Menwin. On the other side, War Cyclone is caught, barely staying alive, but Fnatic flashes after, finishes the job. They will lose their turret. And now they're down a member, down two really, with Sandflame isolated off on the bottom side. Who's going to stop this Baron? Trickster is finding more. He's cut off Miracle and is going to look to keep this fight going. Snared on up there by the Cosmic Radiance. By the Cosmic Binding, rather, Cosmic Radiance is Terrick Ultimate, and they will move back on over towards the Baron. Too many Cosmic names and not enough Cosmic damage as when we able to evade that, not going to be forcing the Baron buff, especially because War Cyclone does have the teleport, so it's a little bit difficult to actually go and commit like that as... Ooh. Do they actually want to force this? They are just threatening, not actually forcing. Yeah, just a couple of blows exchanged here and there. They will be able to get back away, but... Komodo not able to start the Baron in time, instead looking for that pick on a Miracle. But yet again, just finding themselves a free pick on a War Cyclone in the trade for Fnatic's Flash. And Doxa 
has to flash from their own collapse, but oh, I can otherwise know that soul unbound from Titan. Gonna be a rough position for him. Knocked back away. Still able to fade seal his way out to safety, but dares the player down to the equalizer with Pika Pika right on top. Contingent Esports are stuck in the ultimate and cooked down. Three kills back over to Komodo. Yeah, and before they didn't force into the Baron, I guess this is the window to actually force into the Baron buff now. Three members dead, Camille on the bot side, and she has teleport, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I like this play though, moving the six down with the Camille, trying to trade the turrets as quickly as possible. You have a Camille, you have a six, you can burn this down really quickly. It's going to be the Baron buff lost for them though as, oh, Doxa. All right, Doxa does a good job of clearing out the wave. The Whoopi collapsed on immediately, War Cyclone's dead, but I think it's an execute. Yeah, Doxa never touched him. Contingent Esports can call that a victory, but of course, Komodo are taking Baron across the map. And less Fnatic. I don't think you win this Fnatic, though. Uh, trying to get away. No, he doesn't win it. on the other side. Look at the use of the Tempered Fate to try to keep the teammate alive. Love that read from Miracle here. And Fnatic will be able to cleanse it out. So it was a weird 1v1, and then it turned into a 1v2. But yeah, Fnatic doesn't win that 1v2 at all. And really nice use of the Tempered Fate. They still lose out on the Baron buff. But they kill two important targets just before the dragon spawns. It's 15 seconds now for Infernal Dragon. This was going to be soul point for Komodo. And even though it's not going to be the end of the game in getting this dragon, it's still nice wow. to deny them from it. All right, Doxa's TPing in. They want a challenge for this. They're looking for the pick on the Miracle, even without oh, Fnatic here, but TP in for the back line. Look at Sand Flame here, looking at an opportunity to start a 5v4 fight. If they can get a good opportunity to pull the trigger, they're going to pop the ultimate onto Pika 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 coming in on the other side. They're locking down Doxa and will be able to blow him up. And Trickster's found War Cyclone on the other side. It's a one for one of the fight so far as Miracle's getting chased down. And Trickster finds the double kill, dancing around the fight as he looks to finish off a third. When win will fall for the triple kill. And Komodo outplay the four versus five fight coming out on top. They thought they had the right strength. They thought that we were stronger, but Trickster playing as the AD carry, he actually gets more damage than anyone there and able to outplay the 1v3. Also, the focus from Contingent in that play was kind of interesting because they went for Doxa and Clips instead of going for Trickster, trying to blow up this Kindred as soon as possible and then playing off the team fight. Because when they separated everyone, Trickster was just left by himself to be able to deal damage to the to the Six, to deal damage to the Sejuani and deal damage to Miracle, nobody could retouch him and pick up, pick up later people to roll and just controlling the area so that Trickster had a free time as well. Yep, really great stuff there from Pika Pika. He was kind of the initial target getting focused down from Win Win's ultimate, and I do think that ended up costing him a lot at the end of the day as he's just tanky enough to survive through it. Two items strong, three if you count the support item on that rel. Pops the ultimate, turns it back around and plays out his role like he never even got targeted. That just means that Komodo had the extra time to play out the fight and that Trickster gets to just continue firing away. It really is the truest AD carry in this game because you have Jin that is not the typical AD carry, you have Sig that is not an AD carry at all, and then you have Kindred in the jungle actually doing what Merksmen need to do, which is deal damage consistently. Yeah, really, really great stuff out of him and constantly being able to just clean up these fights. Now sets himself up at five, three, and three. The extra BF sword completed and really postured to be able to play a major carry role in these upcoming fights. Oh, Here's an engaged topside off onto Doxa. The tempered fate comes through. Oh, Maybe buy so some extra time that they didn't mean. Doxa able to flash out the safety. Wedwin has to flash deep behind enemy lines to try to clean it up. But the front to back from Contingent is so strong. Komodo are down members and Trickster can't dish out the damage fast oh, enough. There's the cutoff from the Equalizer. So many members burning down so low. Trickster trying to clean them all up. Okay. One more dance of arrows will take out Wedwin and it's a three for two so far. Fnatic not done yet. Looking for the deadly flourish. Can't get the connection on the sand flame. And Contingent Esports will walk away with their remaining two members, but now down members on the map. Komodo are looking to crack open the base. Yeah, may had the four shot there, but it's not enough to actually get the kill. At the end of the day, though, what started as a Doxa pick worked out marvelously for Komodo. They get the kills, they get Trickster into an even more advantageous spot. And like you were mentioning, the twist, the tempered fate there, really unlucky actually, because I think that the idea wasn't bad. The layering of the Bard ultimate with the sixth ultimate was so that you can set up the Camille after she comes out to just kill the, the Jace, and then you get a free kill without much attempt from Doxa to try and escape after that. But 
but because they also buy enough time for the enemy team to come, Docs has survived long enough that the rest of the members could come and try and survive. I think the idea was right, the execution was sadly not the best. Yeah, absolutely here. And now meaning that there's going to be a little bit of, oh, a fight engaging on for Sandflame. Oh, we're going to be looking for the trade on the Docs are not quite able to find it. And the healing from the Crypt Bloom there gonna be absolutely massive. Meanwhile, Pika Pika, then the fight started on the other side. He's gonna chase these two down to the ends of the earth. Cosmic Binding doing a good job of buying the space. Wen Wen going to throw down the Glacial Prison as well. One shot from Fnatic will not be enough to slow down the boar and Contingent are able to disengage. Yeah, but it is a one for one in that situation, uh, or a one for nothing actually in that situation. And oh, the six ultimate, oh, I said one for one, I meant one, uh, I said one for nothing, I meant two for nothing. Yeah, really rough position there for Contingent as Eclipse is able to get the job done. And they lose out on another member, Komodo, firmly in the driver's seat yet again here. They find themselves about 7k ahead. Three dragons deep, and with a chance to close out the series here before too long, Contingent really need to start finding some more of those one-sided fights. They need to be able to lock down and take out Trickster, but that is so tough with how he's been playing and with how strong Lamb's Respite has been. Well, I, have we seen actually a Lamb's Respite from Trickster? I, I, I'm honestly not even remembering him using that at ultimate at all. I'm sure he's used it once or twice, but it's going to make it tough even if they do get onto him. And yeah. the other thing I do want to highlight is Pika Pika. I mean, we were a little concerned about him being the only source of engage. It's been more than enough engage for Komodo so far. Pika Pika having a hell of a performance here today. It's Eclipse and Sandflame going all in. Sandflame finally strong enough to win out on that one. Precision Protocol going to put the rumble in the ground right as Baron spawns and Sandflame has the TP. Yeah, exactly. Just like that, Sandflame putting the side of Contingent back into a com into a good enough spot. Titan taking a big shot there, but he also has teleport, so it's not that difficult to try and play around this. But the threat of the Baron buff now completely alive for Contingent, and also the threat of the turrets. There is bounties as well alive on the sidelines, so if the Camille gets something like that, they can try and play off with that. Yeah, shots coming on across, landing no, on the Miracle's Bard, but nobody going to start on up the Baron yet. It is going to just be a bit of time to chill and looks like Eclipse is going to be able to respawn so not going to be anything really forced here for Contingent and Eclipse will get back out onto the map. And I think the idea for Contingent there was that if they try to burst the Baron buff, if they fail, they get free soul on the side of, of Komodo. But here they can try and fight the, the, the soul as best as possible as War Cyclone coming in on the side as well. He's not a Camille so it's not as scary and oh. Alright, fight potentially got, breaking out here. There's going to be ultimate combo once again. Sandflame is caught inside the fire, and Eclipse once again combines with Pika Pika to just blow open the fight. Contingent are down to yet again. This is going to be Dragon Soul for Komodo, and Doxa potentially hunting for more. And that's 100% on Pika Pika. He sees the angle there to engage and forces the perfect team fight for Komodo. I understand Contingent wanting to fight the dragon, but if you're going to want to fight that dragon, you have to have your Camille on a flank angle and your six right in your position to try and follow up. But they just are three members that really cannot accomplish much, especially with Titan not in spot to follow up. And it's just a really easy fight for Komodo. They get the dragon, they get the team fight victory, and they will get the soul as well. And probably push to try and end soon enough. A okay, really good chance to end out here before too long to secure the Baron buff. It's getting worn by Doxa already. Yep. Team looks to crack up with the base. TP coming in, but Trickster is just waiting for Sandflame, and the damage of the Infernal Soul is just nuts. Sandflame gets blown up in an instant. Win Win going to be the next target. Titan is TP'd in for this as well. Sure. We're going to be able to lock out somebody. There's that Lamb's Respite you were looking for, TDS. Titan has to fling himself into it just to try to buy a couple of moments, but Fnatic is gunning down members left and right oh will finally be taken down by war cyclo but that is just a small break a little bit of an offering back to contingent before they are aced and taken out of this series komodo with the 2-0 komodo get the 2-0 victory crucially without their starting 80 carry and contingent they had really good things they had really nice ideas but at the end komodo is way too strong of force to stop them and just like that 2 0 victory and moving over to the winner's bracket a quick stream here, TDS, just yep. about an hour and a half long. 
and that's all it takes for Komodo to close on out another yep. series win. We called it out earlier, probably pretty heavy favorites for the group. The other four and one team is, is the flying tigers who are going into their game number two right now. They just had a little bit of a yeah. 50 minute banger to kick off their series. So going to have a little bit of additional games to be played there. That's probably where we'll send you guys after yeah. we're done here. But Big, big win for Komodo here. They do have one more match before they're able to lock in top eight. But regardless of who their opponents are going to be, whether it be Reluminate or uh, GFT, they are probably going to be heavily favored. Yeah, they are not only the higher seed, but they are one of the stronger teams here. Once again, depending on if they get links back, which we should assume at the very least for now that it should be the case, they are going to be a much stronger team because Lynx is one of the better AD carries in the OQ. So they are a strong team to consider. And honestly, today's performance, the biggest highlight for me, Pika Pika and Trickster. Both of them performed super well. Both games, Clips, I think, had a much better game one than game two, but he still was dealing out the damage and being such a strong factor. But the jungle and support from this team really shining through absolutely here they showed such great stuff here today and we're able to come on out with another win we'll see if they have links back for for future runs i think definitely fanatic looking a little uncomfortable uh yeah. in the role maybe not the strength that we would have expected out of somebody like links coming into the bottom lane but Still waiting to hear more about that, as I'm sure we will find out in the coming days. Regardless, Kaboto's done for the weekend, and they should be plenty happy with what they've been able to put together off of 2-0. Yeah, 2 0 victory, comfortable into the next match. And also having the potential to play off of the fact that you already won so heavily, you have the chance to see your opponent, and you know that you can be stronger than this. It's almost always going to be great for you in morale department and also just in the time that you're able to spend in how much you need to prepare for the next matchup. That being said, though, the two teams that are remaining are good enough teams, and I think they can give a fight to Komodo depending on how they show up after this match. Yeah, for sure here. So there's going to be plenty more to keep our eyes on in this weekend. We are going to end the stream here and send you guys on over to another match. It sounds like we're going over to... Okay, we are going over to the Salt Mine for okay. Guangdong Flying Tigers taking on Reluminate to find out who the opponent is going to be for Komodo coming into next week. For now, we'll throw it to a end of stream screen. Get that raid going and see you guys next time. Thank you all for hanging out with us from myself, TDS, and Wookie Monster on production. We will see you guys next time.